Section 8.4 is confidence intervals for a standard deviation. There's two objectives here. First is to find the critical values of a chi-square distribution, and then we're going to construct confidence intervals for the variance and the standard deviation. When we do confidence intervals for variance and standard deviation, we have to use a distribution that's called a chi-square distribution. This distribution is very different from the ones that we are familiar with. So far we're familiar with the normal and the t-distribution. Both of those are symmetric and bell-shaped. The chi-square distribution is not. Chi-square distributions are going to be skewed to the right. The distribution is different for different degrees of freedom just like the t-distribution was. So here's the graph of a chi-square distribution with one degree of freedom. Here's a graph of a chi-square distribution with five degrees of freedom, with 10 degrees of freedom, and with 20 degrees of freedom. One thing you'll notice also is the domain for the chi-square distribution is all positive. There will be no negative values for the chi-square distribution. This is the Greek letter chi, and then we square it. It looks like a capital X. That's red chi-square. Unlike the normal and the t-distribution, where we use the area to the left of the critical values, the chi-square distribution uses the area to the right of the critical values. That's a big difference. This is still a probability density function, meaning that the total area under the curve is going to be equal to 1. That hasn't changed from the normal and the t distributions. What that means is all of the area underneath the curve is going to be equal to 1. Therefore, if we are asked to find a 95% confidence interval, we're still going to graph that 95% in the middle, and then we'll find the critical values that will give us the area to the left and to the right of that 95%. As you can see here, when we have a chi-square distribution, because it uses the area to the right, this critical value for the right will use alpha over 2 for the area to the right. And when I want the critical value on the left-hand side, I use 1 minus alpha over 2 when I find the critical value that's to the left. So this is the distribution that we'll be using when we find confidence intervals for standard deviations and variances. Like the t distribution, the chi-square distribution has degrees of freedom associated with it, and the degrees of freedom will be equal to n minus 1, just like it was for the t distribution. In this first problem, we're asked to find the critical values for a 95% confidence interval using the chi-square distribution with 10 degrees of freedom. We begin this problem like we did all of our other problems. We start with a graph, only now our graph is going to be skewed right. Because it's a 95% confidence interval, this area in the middle is going to be 95%, which means the alpha for this problem will be what? When you have a 95% confidence interval, what is alpha? 0 0.05. That area of 0 0.05 is evenly split over the two tails, just like it was before. So that means that this area is going to be 0 0.05 divided by 2, and 0 0.05 divided by 2 is equal to 0 0.025. So this area is 0 0.025 to the right, and this area is 0 0.025 to the left. When I find this critical value on the right, because the chi-square uses the area to the right, I'm looking for the chi-square where the area to the right is 0 0.025, and to find this critical value, I use 1 minus 0 0.025, which is going to be 0.975. Because we have 10 degrees of freedom, we have to go to a table. By the way, there's no inverse chi like there was an inverse norm and an inverse t. We have to use tables to look up these critical values. You will be provided with a table when that happens. If you're doing your homework and they don't give you a table, you can go to your ebook and look at the table in the appendix. Here's the table for the chi-square distribution. When we have 10 degrees of freedom, my critical value that was on the left is going to use this for the area, and my critical value on the right is going to use this for the area, which means that our critical value on the left will be 3.247, and then my critical value to the right uses an area of 0 0.025, and when we look at the table, we see that that's going to give us 20.483. You use the row with the degrees of freedom and the columns for the area, and where the rows and columns intersect, that's where your critical values will be. Objective 2 is to construct confidence intervals for the variance and the standard deviation. Just as a quick reminder, our variance has a population parameter of sigma squared and is a sample statistic of s squared. 
the standard deviation has a population parameter of sigma and a sample statistic of s. So you see the standard deviation is just the square root of the variance. This is the formula that we use for finding a confidence interval on the variance, and this is the confidence interval formula for finding a confidence interval for a standard deviation. n is going to be your sample size, chi-squared is your critical value, this will be the critical value to the right, this will be the critical value to the left. Remember, the critical value on the right is going to be bigger than the critical value on the left, and in order to make a fraction smaller, we divide by a bigger number. So this gives us a smaller number on the left of this inequality and a larger number on the right. Make sure both of these formulas are written on your formula sheet. Notice also the numerators are the same on both of these. When I find the confidence interval for the standard deviation, I just take the square root of what I had for the variance. In order to use these formulas for the confidence intervals, we need to know the sample variance, the sample size, and the critical values. When we were doing confidence intervals on means and proportions, we only had one critical value. But for the chi-square distribution, we have two critical values. The reason we only needed one for the normal and the t distribution is because the numerical value was the same on both the left and the right. For the chi-square, both of these critical values are going to be different, so we need to find both of these critical values. And we'll have to look those up on a table in order to get them. Here's our next example problem, and that is to construct a confidence interval. The compressive strengths of seven concrete blocks in pounds per square inch are measured with the following results. Assume these values are a simple random sample from a normal population. Construct a 95% confidence interval for the population standard deviation. Let's start by writing down what the formula is for the confidence interval for the standard deviation. That's going to be the square root of n minus 1 times s squared divided by chi squared alpha over 2 is less than, sigma is less than, the square root of n minus 1 times s squared over chi squared 1 minus alpha over 2. Do we know what n is going to be for this problem? n is your sample size. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 pieces of data here, so our sample size is 7. s squared I went ahead and found for us using the calculator. That's the variance. It's 2,699.86. That means the only thing left for me to find are these critical values for the 95% confidence interval. To get your critical values, it helps if you draw the distribution. If the area in the middle is 0.95 for that 95% confidence interval, what is the area on the right going to be? And so this critical value, the first one, is going to be 1 minus 0 0.025 for the area, which means that it's 0 0.975. And this critical value is going to be using an area of 0 0.025. Because our sample size is 7, what is our degrees of freedom? 6. N minus 1 is your degrees of freedom. So to get these critical values, I go to the table. And with my degrees of freedom being 6, I look up the critical value on the left by looking at the area of 0.975, and that gives me 1.237. And I look at the 6 degrees of freedom where the area on the right is 0 0.025, and that's 14.449. Once you have the formula and the numbers that you plug into the formula, now it's just a matter of going to your calculator and simplifying this. So this is going to be the square root of 6 times 2,699.86 divided by 14.449 is less than, sigma is less than the square root of 6 times 2,699.86 divided by 1.237. Now let's go to our calculators. We don't want to make any rounding errors with this, so I want to type this into my calculator so that I only hit enter one time. So I'm going to type in the square root of 6 times 2699.86 divided by 14.449 and then hit enter. And that gives me the left hand bound. And then I hit second enter to get back the last thing that I typed in and I'm just going to change this bottom number to 1.237. So this gives me the bounds for my confidence interval. Okay, the question was, on the graph, it looks like I've got 1 minus 0 0.025, which I do, on the left, and alpha over 2 on the right. That's because this 
table uses the area to the right, but on the formula, I have to maintain this inequality, the order of numbers and the inequality. So the smaller numbers need to go on the left, the larger numbers need to go on the right. In order to make a fraction smaller, when the numerators are the same, we divide by the bigger number. So you're correct in your observation. We do use the critical value from the right on the left hand side, and we use the critical value from the left on the right hand side. And what we would say here is that we are 95% sure that the population standard deviation is going to be between 33.48 and 114.44. And that would be our confidence interval. If we were finding the confidence interval for the variance, all I got to do is not put the square root on these numbers. And that would give me the confidence interval for the variance. It's almost 100% plug and chug. Plug in the numbers and chug out the answers. One word of caution, this method only works if you know that your sample is drawn from a population that is normally distributed. In order to use the chi-square distribution, we have to follow strict adherence to the normal distribution rules. The other thing that you want to try to keep in mind is that the chi-square distribution uses the area to the right of the chi-square. That's really the only difference between the normal and t-distributions and the chi-square distribution. Like the t-distribution, the chi-square distribution also has n-1 for its degrees of freedom. And this wraps up section 8.4.